Uh, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Uh, we will be reviewing some changes coming up with our SchoolNet 20.0 uh, regarding your online test experience. Um, this is sort of the final phase of a two-year-long journey of rolling out our new enhanced test tunnel, um, which is powered by TestNav, which is SchoolNet's uh, premier online test uh, platform. So to make sure everyone understands what that means, we thought it was, would be beneficial to um, have this webinar, answer any questions you may have, and really go over some of the basics um, that are uh, part of this final transition. So just to reiterate, we'll be turning off the SchoolNet Legacy Test Tunnel uh, for your users uh, with the release of 20.0. As of now, uh, most folks are on 19.1. Uh, they have a choice between the SchoolNet Legacy Test Tunnel or SchoolNet, um, and that choice will be limited now or, um, to our enhanced test tunnel uh, powered by TestNav. Uh, we will be deploying, because I'm sure folks are asking, when is 20.0 um, uh, being deployed? We, uh, SchoolNet works with customers individually on scheduling deploying software around your um, uh, back to school or summer school needs. So we have a wide range of dates starting at the end of June uh, with um, some early adopters going all the way through August and then actually we have the one customer going way all the way into September because they have a very late start date. Um, right now we are in final testing of SchoolNet 20. We are deploying um, SchoolNet 20.0 on a number of customer test sites afternoon, actually. So you'll see some of these uh, new um, changes. Um, I do have um, a test, an, an additional test environment called DCT um, agreement with SchoolNet. Um, and just to reiterate, all assessments will be previewed, administered using the enhanced test tunnel, test nav experience, um, and we will be showing that live so that you really have a visual of some of these changes. But before we go that, I just wanted to go over some of the basics, and I'll pause after each of these slides um, for questions. I have with uh, me today, I have Jill Taylor, who is the head of our product management team. That may be a name very familiar with a lot of you. Uh, she conducts all of our feedback sessions and really is the driving force and leader um, with our roadmap. Um, and from her team, we have Dean Shoffley, who worked uh, very extensively on the um, integration of TestNav into the SchoolNet platform, so he's very intimate with, uh, uh, with the features of TestNav, and as well as Jeff Oriakua, who is a name that you guys might know. He really helps troubleshoot a lot of um, customer issues and escalations in addition to building some great functionality in SchoolNet. So um, hopefully with a, a combination of the brain power on this call today, we'll be able to answer any specific questions you may have related to this transition. But to um, get things going, I'm going to start with a question and answer that we sent along with our communication and then pause if you had any follow-up questions. Um, so a lot of folks have been asking what happens to tests that are scheduled or in progress during this transition. Uh, we are timing the deployment of SchoolNet 20.0. Um, most of our customers do take that after your school year is ended and New Year rollovers. However, we do have a, small, uh, a few cases where there may be a summer school or um, tests will be in progress prior to the upgrade. So we need to reassure that these assessments are republished after you upgrade to 20.0. So we showed you a couple of screen grabs that's sort of what we mean by republishing um, if you do have an in-progress test. I'll pause there. Does um, anybody have any specific questions about this um, component? Okay. And feel free to chat any questions if uh, you're feeling shy or I uh, couldn't get off of mute fast enough to. We'll, we'll make sure we, we're, we're here to answer all of your um, questions. Um, second question, will student submissions, student answers, or scores be affected on previously taken tests? And this is previously taken test in either SchoolNet, um, Test Tunnel, or, or TestNav. And the, the, the quick answer is no. Um, prior year assessments will reference um, an old score page on the left. And 20.0 will reference an enhanced score page. So by joining this call today, you're getting a little sliver of some of the exciting um, developments in our 20.0 release. 
And one of them is in our score page capabilities. As you'll see on the right-hand side, it's far more graphical. Um, you can see the content um, uh, very clearly and very similar to the student test-taking experience as you are um, scoring uh, various assessments. So didn't want that these two uh, images to be jarring, just wanted to clarify um, in 19-1, the score page and prior year assessments will look different than um, tests that will be administered in 20.0 moving forward. So any questions on, on this, uh, this component? Um, this probably is the most important question. Folks will want to know, will there, your existing assessments or items display correctly for students in TestNab? So as I mentioned, we've, um, we've had this capability in SchoolNet for two years, tried to encourage folks to use it um, uh, to transition to the experience because it does have a far more capabilities for student um, online test taking. Um, but during those two years, we also enhanced and improved um, the capabilities in the test nav experience to ensure that there's feature parity with both experiences. So just to, to put a little more peace of mind, um, our school net development team did a thorough analysis of all customer assessment content to validate it will display properly in the enhanced test nav online test tunnel experience. And they can do that because all of our content is QTI based. So there's a lot of really robust tools to really um, validate um, that QTI. We do still recommend that customers preview any assessments if there's any doubt. You can do that anytime. Um, you'll see uh, on the bottom right-hand side, there's a screenshot of your 19-1 experience where you can choose preview and test now. This will just make sure that, you know, everything looks and appears correctly. Um, if you do make a copy of a previously administered assessment to use in the new school year, school year you may see some warnings. Um, that's just uh, we had to map certain items to certain functionality and test nav. So I didn't want folks to be alarmed about any of those warnings, but um, encourage you heavily to test any content and, and uh, let us know immediately if you're seeing anything um, that is not as expected. Um, and we're here to help um, support you with that transition. Any questions on content and, and transitioning from one experience to the next? All right, you guys are in a great group. I'm um, going to stop talking, and I'm going to let the expert dean show you the test nav experience just to, um, just to uh, give you a little slice of what, uh, what to expect in the transition and really highlight some of the great features um, if you're not uh, already familiar with them. So I'm going to pause for a second and give, um, I'm going to unshare my screen, and I'm going to pass controls over to dean. Give me one second to get to the participant list. Oh, it's not letting me get there as fast as I oh, you already took it. Thank you, Dean. No <laughs> problem. Can you me. hear me? I can. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So uh, one of the first things that I want to show around moving to TestNav is our accommodations function functionality. I think what's really cool about this is each student can have their own personal needs profile configured for them and it really helps you customize the test experience for each student. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go here, we've got this student here, and these are some of the options that are available for you. So the first one is color contrast or reverse contrast. This will give students access to the accommodation and allow them to change it to the various options that are built into TestNav. And it also allows you to set a default. So in this case, I've set the default to yellow and blue. So when the sign student begins their test, this yellow on blue color contrast accommodation is already going to be applied to the content. We've got answer masking, line reader mask, magnifier, text-to-speech. Um, text-to-speech content does need to be generated. And what this allows you to do is set the default voice, whether you want it to be male or female, and the default voice speed, whether you want it to be slow, normal, or fast extra testing time. So if you have the te your test and your test is a time test, I can give my students uh, a percentage above that amount. So if it's a 60-minute test, I give them 50%, they'll get another 30 minutes. 
or I can make tests unlimited for my students. So my time test would then be unlimited for these students who have this accommodation selected. We also have some calculators available here. Um, the four function, five function scientific calculator. This just means that if I want to, specific students can have this calculator available to them at all times while they're taking the test. One of the great things we do with the personal needs profile as well is when a student submits their test, we take a snapshot of the accommodations that were available for that student when they took their test. So if accommodations change throughout the year for students, I can go back to a specific test and see what accommodations were available for that student when they took that test. Any questions on the personal needs profile? Um, just one last thing too on top of that is you can, we do have a bulk import functionality that will allow you to bulk import these based on a, a CSV file if you have that information for your students. Okay, I'm going to sign out now and I'm going to sign in as a student. And I'm going to launch a test here and show you how this looks for a test map. So it's the same take a test web part that students are going to be using all the time for their test. And I'm going to start my test. You can see it's a single sign-on. Student doesn't need to sign into a test nav. And we can start our test. And you can see the first thing you'll notice is this accommodation of color contrast is yellow on blue is already applied to the content. If I want to change that, I can go up to this contract, uh, this accommodations button here, select contrast settings, and I could set black on cream, black on light blue, white on black. I'm just going to choose black on cream. And that's going to be applied now throughout the rest of the test. So here we have a checklist item. Um, this is the same navigation that any user who currently takes tests through TestNav will be used to. You can scroll left or right through your, uh, through your test. We've got this review, which allows me to skip to specific questions. I can filter on the bottom here by not answered question or bookmark questions. I can bookmark my question here, come back to it later. We've got our selection. This is where you're allowed to uh, highlight content. Not only can I highlight passage content, I can also highlight question content. And you get a couple of different options for colors within that. We've got answer eliminator. And this allows me to go through and eliminate specific answers. We also have a notepad functionality where a student can make notes on the question. Close out. I can bookmark it. And when I come back like this, I'll be able to review my student notes that I took as part of the question. And I have no idea what these answers are, but I'm just going to select anything. Um, here we have a drag and drop question or a graphic gap match question where I'm actually dragging the answer choices into my different containers. Um, one of the other things we have here is for this test, I have student comments and each item turned on, as well as student comments at the end of the test. So I can select this button here, and the student can add comments for this question. And these comments will be made available to the teacher on the score page for the student, as well as within the student track accommodations page. You can see here also that this icon gets filled in when uh, comments have been added. Here we've got a passage with just a simple uh, multiple choice question. Here's where you can really see the text to speech accommodation uh, really play out.
So you can see how that will go through read the content. If I want, I have this toggle click to here part, or if I want to hear a specific uh, part of the content, I can select it. You can also change your settings. You can change the to a male voice, make it slower. We're actually not hearing the content over the WebEx. So, pretty powerful functionality um, that we're really excited about. Uh, from here, um, students can also pause the test, you can see, resume their test. Um, this test has a formula, formula sheet um, associated to it, so we can select this exhibit. And in here, we'll pull up the formula sheet for the student to reference. This question also gives a good example of some of the calculators that are available now through TestNav. So we've got a simple four-function calculator, five-function calculator, a scientific calculator, and then we get into some of the new Texas Instruments calculators. So a simple TI-108, which is your five-function calculator, um, the TI-30XS, which is your scientific calculator, and then the TI-84 plus graphing calculator. The Texas Instrument calculators are only going to be available on school, region, and bench or district benchmark and state benchmark tests. They're not available for classroom tests. That was part of the restrictions that Texas Instrument uh, put uh, in place with our licensing agreement. Moving on here, we have a simple drop-down question, um, as to be expected. <clears throat> Works very similar to test funnel does. Um, here we've got our equation editor, and again, exact same um, functionality that you would expect. Here we have the open response question. This is the test and average text editor. You get bold, underline, italic. You can do a bullet list, a number list, and you get the undo and read functionality. Here is a hotspot. You get the warnings if you select more than one. So in this question, I can only select one hotspot. So I can unselect that one. Here you have audio. And I can select my response. Um, here we have our protractor, where you can kind of drag through. In the protractor, of course, you can rotate around as expected. So I can kind of put here, rotate through, 80 degrees. So one of the things TestNav has enabled us to do is a new implementation, if you want, for our gridded item type. So this is a gridded item. Um, you may be familiar with the gridded item in Test Tunnel being one with the bubbles. I still have that option with TestNav, but I also have an option with TestNav where I can do a numeric entry. So like this, I type in 80, and this is going to be machine scored, <coughs> just as you would expect with gridded. But instead of having to select a bubble, I can just type in the uh, numeric response. And then finally, we have passage on the left. And we can go through and select the hot text. So this is the hot text item type, which is only supported with uh, TestNav, like the graphic, app match, uh, the graphic app match item we showed earlier. Once done, students will go through. Uh, they can add, again, more comments about the test. Test was easy. Um, I can see here the student didn't, I didn't answer four questions. I bookmark one. If I want to go back and filter out and just go to my four unanswered questions, I can go back to here. I can, again, type in my answer. See what other questions I didn't finish. Select 
with my answer. Move on to the next one. Uh, keep reviewing. I didn't enter anything here, so I can do this. And if I go back to my bookmark question, I can unbookmark it, go to my review of all questions, go to the end of the test, they'll see that I now have no unanswered questions, no bookmarks, and I can submit my final responses. At this point, what we do is we package up all the responses and scores, and we send that to SchoolNet so it's available to be scored and reported on. Hey, Dean, before we go to the scoring uh, view, we do have some questions in the chat window um, that uh, we'll probably need, um, if you wouldn't mind, um, we go through together as a team. Sure. Okay. Um, the first question is from um, Corey. Um, can accommodations be manually set in SchoolNet or must be set in PowerSchool? Um, they're all set in SchoolNet. They're all set in SchoolNet, okay. Um, uh, I think we have a request to see some of this in Secure Tester um, as well, just to show that um, the experience is similar, so maybe if we have time at the end. The problem um, is if I show it in Secure Tester, it's going to block my WebEx and I won't That's it. right. It will block the WebEx. So um, unfortunately, we won't be able to, but I believe on the training site, um, there may be some videos or documentation that we it can does look, uh, reference. Trust me, it looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we do have a lot of customers using that combination of Secure Tester and Test Mad successfully. So um, that is a good point. It's the exact same Secure Tester application you use for Test Tunnel. You use it for Test Nav as well. You don't have to download a new application for it. Okay, so there are um, a couple of questions in this next one. Um, we found that when an image is used as part of a question or answer choice, the image is white, so the color contrast does not work entirely. Can you verify that? Yes. Our functionality isn't, our technology isn't available to take an image and reverse the color contrast on that image yet. It's something we're working on, but it's a way away. We just don't have the technology now to accurately change colors on images. So images are uh, part of color contrast. Great. And then second part of the question is the highlighter functionality, has that been enhanced in 20.0? I, I believe um, that was on our list. <laughs> yeah. So what we've done in 20.0 that was different before is if I've got a set of items all aligned to the same passage and I highlight the passage content, that highlight will be maintained within the passage as I navigate through those items. Great. And the other part of that that will be um, also included is any notes that I take on that item will also be maintained as I go to the next item and next item and next item. So if I make notes on the passage, and I go to the third item and go to my notepad and those will, notes will still be available. So I think I know the answer to this next question, is, um, but I'll ask it anyways because um, it came up in, um, so folks are, if you're curious how we always stay, try to stay connected to all of our customers, we do meet um, sometimes daily with um, your project managers and your client services representatives, and I, I did hear this question before. Um, so since reading of passages is not a typical accommodation on state tests, can the reading of passages be turned off? Unfortunately, not right now. Um, the reason is the service that we use to generate the text-to-speech content, we have to send the entire test over to because that test then gets sent to the test now previewer so the students can take it. And there's no method right now for us to only do pieces of the test or only generate text-to-speech content for pieces of the test. It's unfortunately all or nothing. Um, with how that works. All right. Um, question next, is it true that answers cannot be scrambled um, if a test is because if, re 
it reads the answer options as they were entered. That is true, and that's something we are also working on enhancing so that you can use the scramble lines for choices um, outside of the um, text-to-speech. So it will read it in the way that they were entered because that's the way the text-to-speech content was generated. Part of the text-to-speech, it's not just um, entering or building the MP3 file that reads back the content, but it's also that highlighting that happens as it goes from word to word, and that gets done to the layout that was entered. So we are working on enhancing that. I don't know when that's going to be done, but definitely something that we are looking into. Um, and I see that someone used the raise the hand icon. Um, and it's Melanie. I don't know if you had a question. Or if maybe you clicked on that by accident. <laughs> okay, any folks that have questions? Okay, if you have more that come along, just keep putting them in the chat window. Um, and, and thank you, Dean, for you fielded all of the questions. So uh, you uh, definitely an expert on these areas. Um, did you want to continue with some maybe the scoring elements? I think you were almost done with your demo. Yeah, that was pretty much it. I can quickly show the score page if people would like to see it. Yeah, that would be great. Let me just start out here and go back to... One other thing that wasn't set up as part of that test, but if I set up my um, student to show or set up my test to show the student test results um, on test submission, I would get a dialogue that would show the student um, the student's test results as they um, as they submitted their test. So that functionality is available. So here's our new score page. This is the student we just took. You can see we've got our questions on the left here. I can filter to manually scoreable questions or show all questions. And what's great about this is it's really the student's um, test experience that we're seeing. So here I can see their student notes they entered. Um, if you highlight stuff, it'll be available. Um, I can see they got one out of one here. If I want to view the correct answer for this question, I can select this and it'll show me the correct answer. Um, if we go here, again, I can view the correct answer here. I can actually apply the correct answer. The student, I can look at item comments. You can look at end of test comments. Um, and as you scroll through, you'll see that that one will recalculate. Now I have one out of one. Here's our uh, multiple choice question. Um, again, I can view correct answer. Oh, see where the student got that one wrong. If we go to this one, you can score by a rubric. We have a new layout view where if I have this side-by-side -side scoring, what this allows me to do is see the student comment or see the student's question response and score the rubric just on the side here. This, you can see your scoring instructions all on the left. Um, and I can just enter enough score. Uh, here we got our hotspot question. You can kind of just keep scrolling through. Um, test restrictions are respect, respected here, so whatever test restrictions we have put onto the test for the for some of the teachers. So if I can only score open response questions, I wouldn't be able to make any changes to this type of question. Um, it'd all be grayed out. If I'm not allowed to score the test at all, I'm not going to get to this quest or get to the score page. Um, let's save results. I'll save everything. So it's 
kind of it in a quick nutshell of how this all works. Great. Well, thank you. Um, that was just a, a quick snippet of some of the um, 20.0 functionality that we're going to be rolling out um, that related to this topic. Um, so uh, a pause for questions as I transition just a couple of closing slides. Dean, if you could pass me the controls. I think I can take them from you. There we go. Thank you. Okay, and I'm going to now uh, reshare my screen. Okay, and can you see my uh, screen? Or anyone? Yes, we can. Yep, we can. Thank you. So I just wanted to re-emphasize um, a couple of items that are on our training site. Um, uh, for folks that may not know or, or visit it regularly, we do have a SchoolNet training site. Um, it is SchoolNet. Uh, it's called the SchoolNet Training Management System, so schoolnet.tms.pearson.com, and all it requires is an email to access it. And on there we have um, the attachment that we sent that really got into the nitty-gritty on, on how things sort of translate or map into the new um, test tunnel um, experience. Um, we also have a nice video. Um, I won't press play because it might uh, suck up bandwidth, but um, you'll hear a familiar voice. Um, um, Dean is uh, uh, sort of our unofficial voice of test nav, so um, just connecting a name to a voice. And then um, we have a lot more of assessment um, and test nav materials on the training site. Um, so we encourage folks, um, if you have any questions, to feel free to follow um, up. Um, you can go via your um, client services representative, or you can um, uh, respond uh, to the email that was sent out, or you can email me directly. I'm happy to help in any way. My email is patty.mcdonald, M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D, at pearson.com. And, um, and so if there are things that, you know, you're starting to um, uh, test out and you, had, uh, you wanted to come back and have additional questions, feel we are, we're here to help. And uh, we do want to encourage folks that you can test your content at any point. Um, you do not have to wait till 20.0 for this uh, shift to occur. Um, and so now would be a good time to just make sure all the ducks are in a row and that um, anything that you want to, uh, to use moving forward in the new online test experience um, would be a good time to test that out. And with that, any final questions folks may have? All right, well, thank you so much. As I mentioned, this is recorded. We will distribute this um, and this information, and you all have a great rest of your day, and good summer if I don't speak to some of you. Take care.